Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over my initial impressions of the GFX 50S Mark II. Fuji was kind enough to lend me the 50S II along with the 63mm and the 110mm lens. Fuji actually let me decide which lenses I wanted to test out with the medium format camera so I decided to pick the 63 and the 110 just because those were the closest to my favorite full frame equivalent lenses, the 85 and the 50mm. Now even though most of my channel is Canon related, I did do a Fuji X Pro 3 review in the past. If you haven't checked that out, definitely take a look at that. That's one of my all time favorite cameras. In the past, I've actually owned quite a few Fuji cameras. I've had the XM1, which was an awesome little camera, uh, the X-T30, the X100S, the X100F, the X Pro 2, and the X Pro 3. So overall, my experience with Fuji has been great. Each camera has its own unique feel. Even with consecutive iterations like the X-Pro2 and the X-Pro3, there were enough uh, internal and external changes for each camera to really feel unique. I love that they really focus on the design of the camera. For example, with the X-Pro2, I had the graphite edition, and when the X-Pro3 came out, there was a uh, there was a few different uh, options that you had in terms of the look of the camera, but there was one that I really loved and that was the Black version. So that camera in terms of look and feel is still my favorite today. So uh, if you haven't checked out the X-Pro3, then I would definitely recommend that. So understandably, I was definitely excited to get my hands on the GFX 50S2. I would say that up until this specific camera release, medium format has always kind of been out of reach for me. And that's because the prices for medium format cameras has always been so much higher than a full frame or crop censored camera. With the 50S Mark II, I would say that this is the first affordable medium format camera for part-time and full-time photographers. So I've definitely had a few days with this camera where it's been in my hand all day, every day. And the more I use this camera, I'm absolutely blown away by the image quality. Even though the sensor in this camera is considered an older sensor now, the image quality that you get is still really great with this. I've definitely been pleased with the low light capabilities and the dynamic range of the sensor. One of the biggest things that surprised me when I got this camera was the size and the feel of the camera. The size of this camera is, is almost like how my D850 was when I shot with Nikon. Um, it's surprisingly light and portable for what it is. And when you actually hold this camera, it feels like a tank. Uh, it, it just feels that sturdy and, and well-built. So it has a really nice premium feel to it, which, you know, if you're paying four grand for a camera, it, it definitely should. But I definitely want to emphasize that this is way more portable than I thought this was going to be. I had no issues just grabbing this camera and taking it out with me for the day. It also easily fit into my day pack, which holds, you know, a camera and two lenses. So it was cool knowing that I could bring this medium format camera in place of my full frame camera kit. And there not really being any compromises in terms of portability. The controls on the camera are pretty simplistic and took a few hours to get used to, but you know, it's a new camera body for me, so that's to be expected. Even though this is my first time using a medium format camera, the slow and methodical style that this uh, camera sort of encourages you to use isn't really something new to the Fuji lineup for me, at least, uh, just because, you know, you have cameras like the X100 series cameras and the X Pro series cameras, which uh, I, I would say also really kind of encourage you to slow down and, and uh, get in tune with the the whole process of taking a picture. So um, this, this camera does the same thing and, you know, the autofocus system on this camera will kind of force you to do that. 
because it's not a phase detection autofocus system and you're not going to be getting really fast autofocus you're naturally going to have more time to consider your um, you know subject placement and your background and everything like that so i would say even though this doesn't have a phase detection autofocus system it's not necessarily a hindrance but more of uh you know a style of the camera shooting with this camera also has been surprisingly easy because of the ibis system i would suspect that i would have had a harder time if i had a, a medium format camera without ibis um, just because I'm so used to it with my Canon R5 now, but the I, I will say that the IBIS system in this camera works really well. I was definitely shooting with really slow shutter speeds and getting results that surprised me. So, so the IBIS in this camera is definitely a plus. That's about it for this video. Subscribe if you are interested in seeing the full review of the GFX 50s2 along with the 63 millimeter, and I'll be reviewing the uh, 110 as well. Also, just subscribe if you are into cameras. I love talking about cameras, probably a little bit too much. I was also thinking that since I have the 50 millimeter and the 85 millimeter equivalent lenses for the GFX system, I love to compare those to my RF lenses and the uh, you know Canon R5 system. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.